All right, today I'm gonna to show you how we can use our little Bluetooth wireless adapter here to uh, turn any connection that works with Xshirt that has a cable that ends in something like this. Uh, this is called a serial DB9 connection. And what we're gonna do is show you how to take this wired connection and turn it into a wireless Bluetooth connection and still have everything work the same. So to do that, to do that you need one of these little adapters and um, and we can show you how to get these. You can contact us for, for info here. But the point is, it comes in this little box with some, some details, and you put this little antenna on the back of it. Some of them have a big antenna. Um, depending on the distance, you may or may not actually need an antenna. Um, very importantly, they also come with this little null modem adapter that you may or may not need, depending on the type of uh, monitor we're connecting. But I'm gonna focus today just on this, really. So. The, the two pieces of information that you need is, you know, do I have a cable that ends in something that looks like this? <laughs> and then the other piece is, what is the baud rate that I should set it to? Baud rate is an old serial thing. Doesn't really matter. The important thing is that you set it to the same thing. So as long as the monitor you're connecting to and this thing has the same baud rate, you're good to go. Um, so first of all, let's go ahead and power it up. There are, there's an on and off switch. Um, there is a little port here. You can plug in a power adapter. Um, if you want to get fancy, there's even, it comes with a little thing. You can actually wire it into something else, but USB seems to work really well for us because a lot of monitors have USB on the back of them. So you can actually power it off the back of the monitor. But for our purposes here, I'm going to just plug this into this little USB thing I have here on the desk. So we have some power. And if the switch is on, you'll see that light come on. So this has been reset to factory settings. Um, the other thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to grab a toothpick, oddly enough. Um, these little buttons and switches here are really hard to flip. And you can use some metal or something, but what the nice thing about a toothpick is you're not going to do any damage because it's a little bit softer. And you can easily reach into these reset or the, the pairing holes if you need to. Um, so in this particular case, I'm going to see if I can get close enough here so you can see. So... <clears throat> has a few things. There's the power switch, like I said, and then you'll see this diagram here showing all these different configurations for these little switches. So the bottom one, we are gonna leave the same, but you'll notice that there's different ones for different settings here. So if we wanted to set it to 57,500, then we'd want the top two switches to be to the left, and then the, the third one down to be to the right. If we want to set it to, and you can just follow the little diagram here to set it to any of the common um, baud rate settings that you need. So for the, the monitor we're going to use in our demo today, we need it to be set to 19,200, which is, if we look, there's one right there. So what does that mean? It means that the top switch needs to be to the left, and then the middle two need to be over to the right. So I'm going to do that right now. So same thing with this little toothpick. Pretty easy to do it with the toothpick. You just flip those over. And you see that now? So now the top ones are left, the middle ones are right. And if we look at our diagram that matches here, we can ignore the bottom. The, 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 more, the bottom changes another serial setting that isn't relevant for us here. And uh, really that's it. So at this point, this device uh, is ready to be physically connected to the monitor. You'll notice as we try to plug these together, they, that won't work, right? So um, this is what's called a null modem adapter. It does more than just change the connections. It actually rewires, it actually switches two of the wires, the receive and the transmit wires get switched in the middle of this little thing. And um, the reason that matters is <laughs> even if you wouldn't, it, it's the exact opposite of what we normally do. So if you have a Criticare, that normally requires one of these. If you use this, you will not want one. Um, if you use Mindre, that normally does not require one of these, you'll want to use one of these. Um, so it's the opposite of, and, and, it, and it makes sense if you think of them as just being switchers. Uh, this thing is configured to be the opposite of what a typical USB cable uh, that you would use um, would do. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. And again, we can help you with individual, I mean, we can basically help you get set up for whatever monitor that you have. Um, we can help you figure this out. So you need that on one side, this on the other side. And uh, if you get fancy, you can kind of tighten those up nice and snug. Um, 
might want to do that for a more permanent setup. But for right now, I'm just going to call this good for now. And at this point, what we need to do is we are ready to pair this uh, with a computer. So before I was only showing you kind of the end of the cable here, but I'm going to show you what, how we can actually use this with a monitor. Um, a lot of monitors will have USB ports in the back. So what we can do is we can actually use uh, the little USB that comes here, even though we're not going to get data out of here, we can use it as a power source for this. So if we plug this in the back, basically it needs five volts of power from somewhere. It doesn't really matter where uh, USB tends to, USB does that, it sends five volts. So that's really all we need. Um, if you don't see the light coming on, make sure that the switch is turned to on. Um, the switch is handy, but most of the time isn't really necessary. You just leave it to on. And uh, the cool thing about this too, is if you turn off the monitor, then this turns off as well, right? So um, anyway, so now at this point, we should be ready to pair this. I have this particular monitor set up here in demo mode, so we get some data. But let's switch over to the computer now. and Let's see what we need to do to get these two connected. So first and foremost, um, we're going to need to open. So if you hit the Windows key on, a win this is for a Windows computer, but you have to pair the Bluetooth device to your computer at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and type uh, Bluetooth here, and we're going to open our Bluetooth devices and settings. And I can select add device. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a Bluetooth device here. And now, um, we come over here and we need to actually uh, push the little pairing button. So again, there's a, <laughs> there's a pairing button down in here. I'm going to go ahead and push and hold that. And that you'll see the light start flashing. That tells us now that we are in pairing mode. And then we should see a device show up here. I have a lot of things on my local. Here we go. There it is. You're looking for SD1000, here it is. You just wanna select that. And pin is actually gonna be one, two, three, four. Hit connect. And that's it. So now it says connected, done. Okay, so I was confused by this at first. I want you to notice here, see how here it says paired and it no longer says connected. I thought that was an issue. Turns out it's not actually an issue. It stays in this mode until it actually you know, until you're actually trying to use that connection, at which point then it will turn on the actual Bluetooth and make the connection, which is great because it's not just sitting there connected when it's not necessary. When you are signed into your XSTRP account here in the case manager, you can click up here and you can select test monitor connection. That's the easiest way to get you a, uh, a way to test a connection. So this just opens a blank case. Uh, it's all fake, none of it's saved, and it just warns you, hey, this is a demo case, everything is say fake except the monitor connection. You say okay. Okay, at this point we can just select MindRay and then say show connection selector. So this is where it can get a little bit tricky actually because it's not super obvious which one of these it is. So just to show you, uh, I happen to know that it's this top one, but just to show you, I'm gonna click on this other one, Bluetooth peripheral, that sounds likely, right? So if I click that and I click connect, it's gonna sit here and try to connect. But if I jump back over to our Bluetooth pairing settings, you notice this just says paired, it doesn't say it's connecting, it's not doing anything. Plus over here, we're not actually getting any data. So surprisingly, it's actually not the Bluetooth one that we want to select in this case. Um, you might have to do just a little bit of figuring out and try a few different ones to figure out which one it is. I'm going to go ahead and say don't use a connected monitor. And then I'm going to show you another important thing here. So up at the top, um, if you go here, and click this little lock icon, it will sh list any devices that you, any serial devices that you've been able to connect to before. And uh, you can just get rid of those. So that way, if they were paired and they were actually the wrong one, um, it won't um, it won't try to use that again the next time. So by clearing that and then uh, hitting refresh here, it even tells you, hey, to apply it, you got to reload. So I'm going to do that. And now let's go connect again. And now let's select, select MindRay. And let's go ahead and pick the generic serial. Okay, at this point, we hit connect. So it's connected and selected, and boom, we've got vitals. And now if we jump back over to our Bluetooth settings here, 
you'll notice it actually kicked this thing on. So it now says it's connected, it's not the same paired, and of course we can see that um, back here in the case again. So I'm gonna say use this connection at this point. It's just like before, right? It automatically selects everything that's um, coming back from the monitor and we are recording vitals. Now, you'll notice nothing connected to this, right? Which is super nice, that's kind of the whole point. Um, and the range on these is actually quite good. Um, I am currently downstairs in an office. If I go upstairs, um, it still works. Um, you'll have to test to see how far it goes, but certainly across a room should not be an issue. It's pretty slick, you just leave this connected in the back of the monitor. You might wanna bundle up the cord back there or something. Um, you know, the, the, the cords are a little long, so you might like wrap it up and put it somewhere or attach it or whatever, but you should be able to just leave it connected to the back like this and have it powered. Um, you shouldn't have to mess with these settings once you have it set up and paired with a computer. So it's not, it's not difficult once you've got it all configured. Um, it's just that initial setup can be a little arduous. Um, get comfortable with, you know, finding the, you got to find the Bluetooth settings. And this is a nice little hint whether or not it's connected here is a good, good thing to keep an eye on. But uh, hopefully this helps. And again, this should work with any of our compatible monitors. All we're doing is we're making the existing connection work over Bluetooth instead. Um, so yeah, hope this is helpful. Hey, have a great day. Bye-bye.